Energy. All right. Sweet. Welcome back to About Effing Time, the number one watch podcast in Uruguay. Woo. Yeah. Apparently. We do actually have a fan in Uruguay. We do. And so I, I use singular. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's you, thanks. Uh, Thank very you very much. much. Thank you. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see some, I mean, I'm, I love looking at George, but I see something behind him as well. Something's this distracted. Is, yeah. As, as I look in this frame, I see something that. new on the set. What is that, George? Uh, this is a Wolf Watchwinder. So this is kind of, yeah, this is, this is this our is. new edition. And you know how you said it takes you two hours to reset your yeah. perpetual calendar when you let it run down? No more problems. This no is, more, this is no more, no more problems. I, I mean, that, that for me is an amazing thing. Um, one thing, sorry, you were asking how we are. I flew American Airlines recently and Shinola. So I just, just kind oh, of a so real random. kind of bizarre thing. I sat in the seat and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And Shinola did the wash bag. Oh, really? And there was a little watch thing in there and there's a whole, a whole thing. Honestly, I was blown sideways. I was like, and we haven't got a Shinola oh, clock, but yeah. I, but, but I'm just going to do a quick shout out for Shinola. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you guys. I mean, like, hotels, yeah. airline, American Airlines, and you, you, you build actually some funky watches. So I'm just doing a kind of like, yeah. I was on this flight to New York and I just went, I mean, it was like a bit of a Scooby Doo, huh? What? <laughs> you know, I was just like there, just going, I had to take photographs of it. I had to, and that was kind of one of my things where I was like, oh, okay, this is it's a total surprise. It was like, yeah. On this note, I have to say on this note, I was on a flight, I don't know which, remember which flight. I got the wash bag. It was a Bamford wash bag. Yeah. What the hell? Cathay was Pacific. It? Cathay Pacific, I took yeah. I must have taken a Cathay flight. There's a there's Bamford, there's a Bamford wash bag. Wash thing. But explain, please. I, and explain okay. to me. So we did a partnership of uh, under Bamford Grooming Department, and my mother and I, um, it's a partnership of my mother and I, and we did the Bamford, uh, so it was a pitch that we did just before COVID uh, and we launched it during COVID. So the greatest time to <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, time. yay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Cathay Pacific, one of one of the best airlines. I love Cathay Pacific. It's, yeah. it's um, And it was just one of those cool things. I was just, it's, and working with them. So we've got Bamford Grooming Department, we've got, uh, and there's Bamford Women's. So my mother's got the Bamford Women's and I've got the Bamford Grooming Department. And it's, so, it, yeah. it's our signature band for black and aqua blue. So You just, know how some people say, you know, world domination is my goal? Like, it's just so clearly the band family's goal. It, 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 <laughs> because you it, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. How are you, sir? I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pumped for what we're going to talk about today. But firstly, you guys have some sexy watches on. And I'd, for once, I feel like I don't have a boring watch. Uh, but okay. I'm not going to show you yet. My arousal okay, level I, no, no, just I'm, went I'm, through I'm, the roof because I can <laughs> see it's not an explorer. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hand over to uh, the Greek Prime Minister. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to hand over to Andrew. Thank you very much for that. No, look, I, I have worn this before on the show. Um, and I'm wearing it again, but today I'm wearing it for a reason. And I'm not going to say what that reason is because wait, wait, wait. you... Give you me, oh, sorry, take sorry. it off. Sorry. Fuck. When will you know, I get this right? So, so when? Th th this is my favourite watch of yours. So... Give us a bit of a background on the watch. What's so, so this is the Look at that dial. Time and Tide uh, Night Surfer, the Zenith Defy Classic with a, a liquid gradient dial and a solid star of super, lum super luminova. So the star, which you can't see now, obscured by the minute hand, is, it is actually a block of solid loop super luminova that is chiseled into the shape of the Zenith star. It's the only, only Zenith star made out of super luminova. And that's the night surfer idea is that at night, the star illuminates like the evening star in Australia when you're surfing. 
and stuff. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Surfing at night. That that when you told me about the night surfing. <laughs> I love that podcast it's, episode. It, it's such a. It's an oxymoron in some ways. It's one of those well, things that doesn't happen. It's a great way to shorten your life. It's a great way to end That's your life. Tidy. Surfing Australia. But there's a reason I'm wearing that today, aside from me loving it. Um, and we will move on to George because uh, there's, there's a huge reveal to happen here. Um, I've, I've probably over egged this to be fair, but let's, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> I've got the Jarrah Parago. Uh, this is. Um, now, for me, this was a limited edition oh watch. God. And this is uh, my favourite watch of this yours, George. Is hard, uh, it just cheers me up every time I see I, it. So, it's like mouthwash for the eyes. It is gorgeous. So for me, <laughs> mouthwash for the eyes. <laughs> see, your marketing it, department <laughs> needed me. Um, that's, that's the caption. But GP so, Laureato. Th this, this was the Jeep uh, Jarrah Parago Laureato uh, white ceramic on. On, you can get it on white ceramic bracelet that my wife has uh, this is a unisex size so for me what I loved is it it fits on my wrist it looks great on my wrist but it looks on, on everyone's wrist and they've just brought out their new steel uh, version that is about the same size as this so yes. for me that's that's the great thing and literally sold out sold out in record time would I, you let them make that a I mean, you couldn't let them make that a, a production model just for the sheer fact that every time I see it, I just think they no, totally messed do you know, up. Do you know, I, 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 was, I want to do another one. I want to do more on this because... I'd love to see this in a very, very, very light model. grey. Yeah, oh, no, 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 yeah, with but, glue. No, 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 but what even like an army green or? Oh, yeah. uh, oh know, yes, desert, yes, yes, yes. You know, yes, we, yes. We, we talk about those colours. Yeah. Yes. You know, there is. So anyway. On I, a rubber strap. Or even, can you imagine even uh, like a beautiful blue? Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, a, you know, maybe even like a night surfer colour. Oh, sorry. Did I say... <laughs> God, they look good together. Look at those. Here's That's a... cool. Yep. Nice. Right. I've, I've massively, massively over-egged what I've got. <laughs> uh, this is a 1970s Mondan. So Mondan... The, the, Ooh, wow. what, what, what I like Love about this watch is well. actually how different Quirky. their design signature is, their, their design language is now from back then. So look at that very bizarre logo at the top for Mondan. It's, it's really quite odd. But this, for me, this represents a, a time of, of me exploring watches. I bought this off eBay for probably about 30 or 40 quid. The glass was, was cracked. It was all scratched up. The hands were a bit bent. Uh, so it was my first attempt at doing up a watch. So I bought some cheap tools off eBay. Look at that. Pop the glass Look, off. Sorry, nice. we, we're describing the, the how, cool, but it? also how the side edge is. It's got a little step up. There is something really sexy about this watch. I mean, I'm sorry to our podcast um, listeners, but look no, on YouTube. Sure, yeah. Is, that look a, on is YouTube. it a roulette date wheel or is, the, is it always red? I think it is roulette, yeah. It, I love honestly, that. this this is just a cool watch. It, it is, and and it was it was fun doing it up. It was it was scary trying to get it all. I know, no, it's straight. I know, I, but I love that they've done a red red day with red day. I couldn't get yeah. the right. Uh, I mean, I just bought this. It was all cheap parts that I used, but it was it was just fun doing up a watch. Um, yeah. And it's a Bark and Jack strap. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, official uh, Pauline. Is it the official uh, or the uh, Chinese knockoff? No, this is a beautiful segue. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> So it is about effing to look at that lineup. What a lineup. Oh man. Well, I've, I've got to say that the, the, the it's, GP was. It's, and, it's and, grandpa and, at the wedding. <laughs> but also, the other thing I will say to you is this: these are all our watches. Yes. So oh, just so you out. know, yeah. we're bringing our own watches to this. So these are the things that we've we've either spent money on or done a collaboration on or done something with. And it is these throughout the whole of the show, we have chosen our own watches. And there's probably time that we called out season one. We did do it multiple times through season one, but how many of those were George's watches, Adrian? Yeah, I, well, I, I only bought two watches. I very rarely travel with a lot of watches. And I so, think I might have had two or three. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was but a it George was, Fest, it was, but it was these fun. Are, this these... has been a, like a collection reveal, like a staged yeah. collection reveal, because every watch we've worn has been ours. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, guys. It's about effing time that we discuss fake watches. And that is not just because this is the number one search topic on YouTube. We have stats to share with you that I don't think anyone, I haven't heard anyone discuss these stats before. Yeah. Let's within, go there. Within our, our, our watch world. So, let's get a... <laughs> oh, shit, it wasn't reset. Is that reset? Yeah, it is reset. Let's do it again. Pull That's it fine. Pull it out. And we're off. Boom. We are off. Guys, before we get into the discussions that I want to have today, 
I want to kick off with a confession time. Crikey. So within the watch community, it is massively frowned upon owning a fake watch. But have either of you bought a fake watch before? For you to wear, not to examine or for, study. For, for the intent of treachery, as in trying to, to genuinely trick people that it's real. Is that what you mean? Potentially, yeah. yeah. Have you? I actually, and I'm not pure as a driven snow in any way. As oh, we know that. that. Yep. I Last night proved that. <laughs> Marcus told me. <laughs> I have not, and that. Is, but again, that is not because I look. I've told this story, I think, before. In episode one, I talked about wanting a Tag Heuer knockoff so bad. I was at Caulfield Grammar School in 1992, and everyone had been to Bali for summer, and I'd been to Cobram. Um, which is somewhat less glamorous than Bali. It's a, like a wheat belt, dry, dusty town that I grew up in. It was not a good holiday place. Um, but they did have a good caravan park But where we stayed. So I'm revealing my luxurious roots, but I uh, desperately wanted one, so, and I, I didn't have the money to buy even a knockoff in school. So no, I haven't, but um, that doesn't make me pure. Have you, George? Um... <clears throat> I, yeah, I brought quite a few, uh, in, and the reason why, the reason my ego feels so amazing when I see a knockoff because I, I've got. I'll tell you a little bit of a story. I was I was on the beach on holiday, and this person came up with this. Um, kind of rack of uh, <laughs> rack of those of, coats. Oh no no no! no, <laughs> no he came up with this kind of rack of things. And he was going through, he just went, I've got some watches, I've got some watches, and there was a, a this, a this, a this, a this. He said, I've got a Bamford. And I went, what the fuck? Excuse uh, me? Uh, and anyway, he then went to me and said, I've got a Bamford. And it just, it, my ego felt so freaking good at that, at that um, time. It, it just felt good. Um, You've screwed up my whole jam. Thanks very much. <laughs> okay, so thank you very so, much. And so then, I kept on going to different fake markets. I, I'm, I've even got a the dial of one because I, I, I got rid of them. Uh, but we've got the dial of a fake that sits here. Um, but the thing is, I then went to different fake markets um, and found some of these pieces. And yep. and it wasn't it wasn't that thing of saying to you. I I'm I want to buy a fake watch. I, it wasn't my ego. Just was like, wow, it's this, this much, and you've got. But to see some of the level that they did on the quality, mm. that was the thing. This is this is a part of shit. But mm. but what I mean is, it looks good from the distance. Yeah. But the alum's wrong. The bum 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 bum. But I was like, but I took them to bed. I constantly, yeah. I used to just love just stripping them. I never wore one, yeah. But I took because my ego is one of those. And things. that's why that strip, right? That's yeah. one of the ones you took apart. No, no, and, and um, cases are gone. We so, smash. We we yeah. use the cases. What is the movement? What, is, what what did they use? I don't know. It's I think it's a Chinese. It yeah, something. Tiny. It's a tiny little movement, um, and there was weight weight inside the case. So in the oh, back of the case. But what I did was I on these because they were using surgical steel on quite a few of them. We used to just use them for testing. Um, so when we we're doing new coatings or new things, <laughs> you test them on the fakes. Yeah, test them on the well, fakes. So, so the reason I throw this down, like it's just I don't I don't really play poker or anything, but I throw that down as a trump card is because I was like, ha. Look at this. You, you'd stolen my thunder, but my brother has moved to Bali to live. He's living the dream. Lucky, lucky him. I know. And he was on the beach and someone came up to him, not with one, but a briefcase of one model, the, the Bamford Milgas. So have a look at that and tell me if you would have been fooled. No, because it's, it's wrong bezel. Okay, what else? No, no, instantly you can just see that yeah. the bezel side is wrong. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a few things that you would, you'd go, but, and also the Illuminus is shite, and there's a few things. But what I would say to you is, the, Monaco, you know, I'm seeing, I, and I, 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 when, we, when we're starting searching that for Monica. this, yeah, when we're starting searching for this, um, you know, I'm going to take this out of the way. Yep. This watch that is the real watch, this is, the, this is one of the prototypes, 
this watch, I now am on the internet, because you asked to do some research, I was yeah. on the internet and I saw this, this watch for the sale on the internet. Yeah. I've seen this watch as well for sale on the internet. Now, I don't, uh, firstly, this is impossible to try and fake because it's forged carbon, yeah. the lips, but you can see it has been fake because the photograph, I thought it was, oh, so it was a photograph of a fake. I, of a fake because I, they always put real, uh, you know, there's a f loads yeah. of things on that, but the stepped side of the case is not stepped. And that's where I'm saying to you is like, even when we talk about, you're going to talk about this being fake, but even there's a Mr. Porter uh, Zenith that we did yeah. with a blue dial, solar blue that I just found on the internet this, uh, this morning. In research. And, in research. And I'm just like yeah. going, uh, there's some of these watches I'm going, well, we only made 25 of those. Yeah. So where, what, how, you know, and, and, you know, there's those type of things of like, where does this happen? I mean, the Snoopy Frank Muller that we did. Yeah. We only did a small number of them, and already I've seen a Snoopy Frank Muller face. It's crazy how quickly on, it's on happening the too. On the internet. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to say is, don't buy from the internet. Don't buy from the the street sale. Don't don't because. I brought it because my ego, I felt like, fuck, I've made it. Yeah. You know, I know that sounds but, strange. But, 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 but that, that's, that's a weird, it, it, it's, it's a weird connection, isn't it? That, well, it's, it's, it's that whole thing that there's, there's flattery in, in um, what's the phrase? Imitation is a it, serious form of flattery. That's exactly that. And, and so the, the, there is a weird thing that massages your ear in a very small fashion. Uh, the, there's uh, people use, on Alibaba, people use my... NATO straps to advertise their NATO straps. I think, fuck, it's... at first I was, I was pissed off. I thought, oh, it's just... all right. But so, you had the same little ego. But, but they're, they're using that as, as a barometer of, of, of quality. And and so I, I can absolutely appreciate when you see your watch being faked online that well, actually it's, 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 it's one of those weird things. Before we get into that, I, I want to discuss the... Yeah, and tell your dark secret. So George's yes because it was a he, he oh it back, okay okay so, 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 no so because so I couldn't afford it when I was about fifteen <laughs> I, I bought a um, a fake tag Hoyer this was my dream watch as a kid I, I used to obsess about this uh, and because, I love the bracelets on that at the time I loved it now I think it's fucking horrible no I uh, still I love the bracelets <laughs> on this I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be buying a bracelet Subdars are like the uh, Swatch Omega. So uh, my, my dad was stationed in, in Turkey, in Inchilik, in the, the late 90s. And I, I went out to see him and there was a strip and it was just tradition to buy a fake watch. And at, at the time, I knew exactly which hands. You, you, there was a whole cabinet full of Breitlings, tags, Rolexes. I knew which handsets were right and I could, I could identify which watches were the closest to the original. Double A quality? Oh, no, no, I, no, not, no, not quite that size. No, no, but, no but, they, but they, I remember when you go in, they're like, this is double A, this is, oh, this yes, is yeah, AA, yeah, yeah. this is, you know, so this is triple A, this is AAA, a, and then this is A. This is and dog then shit. This is, this is a pile of shit right in <laughs> yeah. the back. Bamford's with a pile of shit right <laughs> in the back. So just... But they, they, they had Tag Heuer with, with, with Breitling hands. But it, it, it was... <laughs> I like the fact that I, I could identify shit like that. But I bought one of these. It was about $20. And How old I, were you? 15 15. Went back to school, uh, boarding school, and for probably about a week, I felt pretty cool having a tag on the wrist. Um, at the airport on the way back from Turkey, I, I went to the tag dealer and said, oh, I got a tag crown graph. He said, oh, no, nice, it's nice. It was like, didn't recognize it. Yeah. So I thought, cool, game on. Uh, but I felt dirty and I swapped it for my mate who wanted it. Uh, he had a, a true animal watch. And I thought that was much cooler. So I swapped <laughs> this for an animal watch because I just felt like a bit of a prick because I wasn't a Tag Heuer owner. It was, yeah. it was fake. So what, that was when I was 15. Uh, at the time, I identified that this was representing something who I wasn't, and I was much happier with this animal watch. That so that, that feeling you had and that, that experience you had with wearing a fake is kind of where this whole discussion is centered around, isn't it? Yeah. Because like, I, I, uh, I can imagine, George, you've never quite done it. So a lot of our audience will have done this and relate to what you said, but we'll get into that deeper a little bit later. I did just want to chip in and say the same. I wanted to add another dimension to this whole thing about... Um, Sorry, who, who wears this watch? <clears throat> oh, the Greek Prime Minister. What? Uh, really? <laughs> so this watch was, I think, uh, around about 9,000 pounds. 
And on the on Chrono, you've got the Blu-ray button. I've got no. Well, that that's actually a render. I'm pretty sure. But this this is part of the problem. So at the moment, if you go on Chrono 24, there's one Night Surfer with a completely absurd price tag on it. Oh, so this sure. watch is just unattainable. And my CFI just want to point out the so the internal talk at Time and Tide was not. Um, <laughs> got mortgage to pay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, I probably should have scrubbed names out, but Matt works for us. Um, uh, this was not where we landed. This is my CFO who says, this is the stupidest thing I've seen in a long time, maybe ever. So there was no internal high fives and uh, back celebration, but that, that's what leads to this. The sheer unattainability of things leads to um, people potentially... I mean, this is a fair discount, though. But just to explain our process here, I am, am not very intelligent at times, and I can jump at things. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Watches.com. Um, no, I thought, quick, quick, we'll buy it. We'll get it in. We'll have a look at it. And I started, you know, tap, 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 bye, bye, bye. And my CFO, who wrote the stupidest thing ever, jumps in and says, stop. What, what are you doing? This is clearly a scam. There's no picture of the watch. They haven't actually made it. This yeah. is like a scam bot type thing where we enter our details. And then for the next three days, we're having, you know, groceries purchased. Your, your, in, your credit card's done. In Lithuania. Yeah, yeah. My credit card's done. Um, so this is there's, there's a lot of dimensions to this because th I think your point about don't do it for reasons, I can add a reason. Don't do it because I'm sure that if you go to, I won't say where this is, but if you bought this watch for 220 bucks, you, you will not receive the watch almost certainly and you are likely to be scammed. So th this is interesting. We, we've we've got three different perspectives of, of why. Y yours is quality. This isn't the product. Yeah. Mine is you're representing something. You're showing something that isn't actually you, isn't actually real. Mm -hmm. And yours is you're going to get fucked. They're, they're going to um, empty your bank account. Get... Can I ask yep. why I highlighted the time and tide? How did you feel when you first saw a fake of yours? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I took a screenshot and I sent it to Romain at yeah. Zenith. I sent it to, Viz to Vittorio at Zenith. I sent it to Julien at Zenith. <laughs> and I was so proud. <laughs> so no, but this, this, is, this, this is such a, no, this is this, the thing. Such it's like, a bizarre our, thing. Our side, our ego goes, oh my fucking God, this is awesome. But yeah. then the- but, but for then why? Romain but, wrote but, back and said, well, we've clearly made it now because yeah. it, it's, it was and an that, unusual Zenith. So like, that, there aren't that many Zenith and, limited yeah. edition. I don't think there's any yeah. other Zenith limited edition fakes. So it was one of these things where there is oh, solar blue. <laughs> I, love, I, love this, I love this battle of, no, there is my fake. <laughs> Your fake this episode's is... taking a weird, <laughs> egotistical we're, we're, twist. We're supposed to bash fakes. So I'm, I'm getting the... Fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. You can buy these online and you can tell someone else. The, the, the um, Swiss watch industry has cost to, 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 to validate their accuracy. <laughs> we, we have fakes to validate our <laughs> to importance. To validate our egos. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> what I'm saying to you now, I'm going to call out something that I think is a really good and uh, good per, uh, good thing that's just started happening. Um, and I, <sighs> I, I, when we talk about this, is watch Anish. He has been calling out. Anish, yeah. Uh, oh wow. He's been calling he's, out he's the all the, the protector Richard of the peace. Yeah. Richard Mill, Patek guys that have been wearing fakes, yeah. and honestly. He is. He got cancelled by Instagram mm -hmm. for doing this. I mean, he has gone after all of these people that are wearing fakes. Now, this is where I have this thing about fakes: is that remorse or that thing of it's a fake? Mm -hmm. These guys are like, you know, even atting Richard Mill and talking about all their things. Anish has been on his stories religiously going after these guys and kicking the shit out of them. And, now, well, and, and, and that for me is these guys have the money to do it. Yes. So that's where I kind of go to myself and go, you've got the money, you can buy the real watch. If you don't, then don't, don't fake it. But this leads into, an, uh, an, I guess, the big question. Is there any need for a fake? Is there a reason to own a fake? Because with these celebrities, if they're on Instagram, I'm playing devil's advocate here. These celebrities, if they're on Instagram showing that they've got this, this RM that costs half a million, yeah. 300,000, that's 100,000. They've got that amount of money and they are recognizable as well. Yeah. And so Instagram, watch spotters know that that person has it. They see them in the street. Job done. Well, some of watch sponsor puts it up there. They're naming no. another Instagram. You know, there's some people that put put them up there and go, "Hey, it's so this. if if you know you're a target, and this is why I don't wear high value watches. Absolutely not a celebrity, but 
watch people recognize me in the street. And that freaks the fuck out of me. It's only going to take for one bad person to recognize me. That happened me. to us yesterday. No, it, no it, but, but it, it, it happens more and more. And I just I think... Can I say one thing? Adrian, I think, do you have a process when someone says that? Because you straight away pivot it when it's like, oh, it's a guy, you're the guy from YouTube. And you were like, what's your name? And then he said <laughs> Raphael and you said, that's my son's name. Great name. Is that actually your son's name? It is, yeah. Oh, wow. I thought you just lied. That's no, 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 no. No, I, I, I want to know. I want to know it, it, if, if you, if you've come up to me to say hi, I, I want to know who you are because the, the, the whole thing around my channel is, I want to talk to you mm. about watches. I'm not talking to, yeah. however many people. And that's the kick when you're suddenly talking to the guy. But exactly, he, he exactly. just looked. I mean, it's, and also it's it's like <laughs> it's like when you see someone wearing. The, the, the football team's t-shirt that you support so you immediately have something in common yeah i know you know who i am we both like watches so never, i, I want to know what's on your wrist moment. so i can do yeah. something we were in morocco my son me um we actually had a bit of a, that kind of go and go and explore the souk and my son is obsessed with sneaker sneaker culture i think he's got it slightly from me but he obsessed with supreme and all those different things all the brands that i've worked with we've had fun with we've done some things and he i there was some fake supremes and he went that's disgusting oh really mm. and i went i went to her and i said what wouldn't you know i'm ha i'm happy if you want one i'm happy of buying and he goes no, no, no. He said, I, but I do like that camel T-shirt that was a, you know, camel and welcome to Marrakesh or something. And that for me was the telling thing that he, and it's not him being a snob. It's not him. He just went, it, he went to me and said, I just can't face my friends having a fake because mm -hmm. they know. He said, and he, he learned about fakes with Pokemon cards. Yeah. So, right. so there is tons <laughs> of Pokemon cards. And yeah. he learned. That was like, a fake. It's okay. <laughs> um, he learned about fakes from Pokemon cards, and that was one of the clever things: is understanding fakes. Mm. So why I'm kind of coming it round is my my son was trading Pokemon cards, and he on eBay you've got to be bulletproof on your mm -hmm. your things. My son had all the right cards had because I know because I got them from Japan. I got them you know wherever I was, I was helping him out getting, and he made some money out of trading Pokemon. There was these fake ones, and he showed me. But we'll, we'll get on to another story. But can but but, but can the, the, I go the, stats now because I just want to show. The just, size just a of quick the thing: There's, if if we bash fake watches, there is no point of this being, coming from a place of snobbery. This isn't. Uh, th there are many many no many watches that I can't afford. At, I, I would love a bash on overseas deal time. Yeah, I can't afford it. I'm not going to go buy a fake one. So this this isn't from a place of snobbery. We're, we are in a very privileged position to have nice watches, uh, but we're not saying, oh, you, you shouldn't wear this because you can't afford it. No, there's, shit, there's a load of watches that I can't afford. There's a lot of watches that all, all of us can't afford. Yeah. Uh, so this isn't coming from no, a place of snobbery. I, I, and it's, it's that thing of like, why I say to you, we have a ceiling or any of these things. We have prices that we go, actually, we're not going to mortgage the house to get that watch. There is no, we, we love watches. But I would also say to you is, go and explore if you're going on the internet go and explore vintage weird and wonderful watches yeah. you're gonna get yeah. if you want a richard mill go and get a, a weird and wonderful hamilton or something yeah. else go and yeah. get something else that will make you smile and give the same effect and that yeah. for me is on this whole thing of yeah. don't you know for the same price you, you what was it 200 quid to 220, yep. 220. Yeah. 220. You could go on to three or four websites and pick up something cool. And awesome. a quick little awesome. shout out to Jody in Australia from Just One More Watch. There are YouTubers. Th that's an awesome ch Holy channel to follow. Crap. If if 200 quid is your is is your, your limit. He, he will give you he, he options, will give you, yeah. weekly options. And he did one this morning on a, is it Vostok? Uh, you know, anyway, there's they're under $165 Australian. Yeah. Um, so th there's definitely watches that are at every price point that can cater to the obsession of the hobby. But yeah. I want to show the size of the problem. Please, I want to, please. Because yeah. you might, like, often Marcus and I are thinking, oh, what are some great topics for the show? We're going to bring, come in hot for season two. And then we looked at all the most popular you watch YouTuber topics. And Adrian, that this is your world. Mm -hmm. Fakes. Mm-hmm. Ro Rolex is the fakes, most fakes, 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 searched fakes. luxury brand, and then the fake Rolex is above that. Let's go straight into that because I've got some numbers for you. Cool. Thirty percent of luxury watch searches are for fakes. So one in three people that are searching for watches online in our world of, of nice watches, fake. That's what they're searching for. So one in three people are actually not seeking 
a legitimate product. They're seeking a place they can buy a fake product. To get the feel of that, I, you know, it's the fake Birkin. Or the look. I think it's more the look of it. The but feel you'll never get. No, no, but it's that feel of, like, you know, if your friends have got a such and such, it's that, that kind of wanting to fit in. Don't yep. be proud of who you are. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and not only are one in three people searching for fake watches, the most searched brand for fakes every year, well... The most search brand for fakes in the last 12 months has been Rolex with 228,000 annual searches. No other watch brand makes the top 20 for knockoff searches. So we have Rolex, then LV. Let's put it here. We have Rolex, then LV, Gucci. You can see a trend here. Yeezy, so this wow. This is Watch Pro. Oh my lord. Shoot me in the face. <laughs> Crocs are above Balenciaga. <laughs> I, I, I know this sounds strange, but wouldn't you be pissed off if you're Balenciaga or Adidas? You're, you're like Crocs is above oh, you. Oh fuck me! I need to lie down. I, I need to. I, I'm completely <laughs> Did, diverted now. But I've got a whole thing that, about Crocs. But my thing is, I think this one will go right down there because. Oh, oh yeah, now yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of searches for Rolex online. There's a lot of searching for Crocs, <laughs> and it has a very real and material <laughs> impact on the Swiss watch industry. There is estimated to be two billion dollars, two billion US dollars of lost revenue for the Swiss watch industry uh, as a result of the fakes being but bought. That's I, see, I think there's bullshit on that. Yeah, because I, I, we both were like, oh, what the hell. Well, that's I th- a good point. I, I think because my s- let's let's take some of the fakes. Your fake, the fake of your watch, yep. two hundred quid. The guy that's going to pay two hundred quid is not going to, or two hundred and twenty dollars yep. is not going to be the person that is going to be. Yeah, uh, here. <laughs> uh, the guy that is um, buying this is He's not, not going to buy the real one. He's not going to buy the real one. Yeah. So this is dubious. Yeah. So for me, I'm like. I, I, call That's an assumption. I call bullshit because yeah. I'm like, I think on micro brands and on brands yes. below a certain price, I think it's taking their, their market it, share. It's taking yeah. their market share. Um, yeah, but I also don't think they were ever going to be a micro brand consumer because they're, they're searching for the, or, or the, what they're seeking is the, as you said, the feel, I say the look of a luxury the, brand. The, the brand and recognition. they were never going to wear a studio underdog because it's not going to impress the guy, on, you it, know, it, they're, yeah. they're cab customers. But no, no offense to cab drivers. Oh, where? Amazing watches. Oh, oh, I did. I, London cab drivers. Every single cab driver. Who since says, you mentioned that. Who says, what, what, what do you do? And they love watches. Why do they get yes. paid? Why do they get yes. paid? Yes. I, no, oh, no, they, they, no, they, they work for themselves and there's a lot, and they do some really hard hours yeah so look cab drivers. drivers we love you um yeah, they, they earn and you know it is one of those things that I, I but they're not going to be the person yeah. you know the, the person that's buying this is not the person that's buying f- uh, the actual watch so so that's why i'm i, I think you're about to call the same bullshit i just want to do oh, one more thing i just yeah. want to do one more thing this is the bullshit that london cab drivers have to put up with in in london look at this we drove through a half a meter of water around this what? corner to come into bamford this morning because of the rain overnight so anyway we, 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 um, I we did heard lapping on the car it was like being in a boat um can, wait 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 can i can i just can i just say one thing when anyone in any other country goes i'm not coming to see you because of rain i'm like fuck off yeah exactly you know, i was in la and 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 some friends of mine and i'm, it rained I'm, I'm in calling LA. you out you uh, anyway they, it's they, because in LA they're like, what is that? They, they, they're from like, the oh sky my god, the that whole has... city comes to an end. <laughs> <laughs> we drive through rain. It's We're probably used because to rain. there's acid in the LA rain. I, now, to be fair. sorry, Adrian, you have got <laughs> to what? Is this Can a test one, on us? One more step. One, one more step. step. Last more step. So uh, the Swiss watches industry produced 30 million watches in the last uh, 12 months, and there are 40. There are estimated to be 40 million fakes made per year. And I ask a question. This is a table I had written down here. How many of those 40 million fake Swiss watches do we think bear the crown? I'd, I'd say it has to be over half. I'd, 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 I, I, would... I, I think I want to come back to that pie chart that we had last time in season one. 30%. Because I think it is exactly the same as what we see on that pie chart. That's interesting. I think that is a that brilliant, because, brilliant way to think because, about it. Because that's the only way. If you look at that pie chart, if, yeah. I, w- if I was... 
in the fake market and I, I was the the person setting up the thing, I'd be looking at that chart and going, That's okay, so you Omega's go, at this point. Yeah. So I now know Desirability. how much yeah. I need to feed yeah. the market. Then I'll put some spattering of a Time and Tide or a Bamford, and then yeah. I'll put some, I'll put a but bit more. I can more jack on, on everything. <laughs> but I'd also put a bit more of, of a Richard Mill in there and some yeah. things that are, or AP what skeleton. What number again? I think it was 27 or so. It was crazy. It was 28%. 28%. 28%. So yeah. nearly a third so th that means and then I've, I've got a little twist here that means if we can assume that rolex produce in the realm of let's just say one to 1.3 million watches a year mm -hmm. yeah by this logic there are seven million fakes made per year that means for every real rolex made there are one two three four five six seven fakes wow well done on branding <laughs> you made it yeah i mean like honestly you know the thing is I, king I, is I, the king for the reason but the thing is you you want to be pepsi not coke and you want to be the underdog and i i i look at the the brands that are underneath it um, so i i i want to i want to stop things just for a moment you want to pause this video us, we're going to get marcus to zoom in as as far as he can i'm not going to hold them up because they'll, they'll go out of focus but I want Let's you... ask the audience. Audience question. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. Audience question. I want you guys to pause the video, have a good look at these two watches here, and tell me which one is fake. One of them is fake, and I think it is epic. I think you need to look, do this, to be fair. No, you... no, no, no. Because it, the, a lot of the main details are the bezel, the anti the presence or lack of presence of the anti reflective hey, do you want a material. pencil for both Actually, sides? Yeah, you talk, talk through the things that we both, should look for. Okay, both. so, so the things that... Give a class here. But not only on... One, go on both. Give both yes. the so, love. So, because... so the big thing is is the magnification of the date window. So the, typically the magnification is two and a half times. It changes per model, but on a sub and a GMT, it's right. about two and a half times. So the, the Cyclops wants to magnify the date window by two and a half times. Both of these have it. You have anti-reflective material on, under the Cyclops. Both of these have it, not on the main uh, crystal itself. You can't see it, but down here we have an etched um rolex crown that's uh, another sign of the fake and this and shows this has a rolex crown in between swiss and made that means this has a newer movement compared and, to this one and here you've got the serial number on both of them written you've got in. the randomized serial number down the bottom here and then you've got the fit and finish of the whole watch itself i mean these have different bezels let's keep bezel action on different so yeah. this is this submarine bezel action so it's pretty solid well, we don't know which one's fake at the no. moment, do we? The, this, the, if you feel this, be, you know, I'm feeling this bezel. So, but, but this is a different, different makeup. So this, this, this is a, a bite. Yeah, that's got that rubbery gem tip. Got some pop here. Why are you so bad at this? <laughs> it's a joke that never gets old because it's real. So drop a comment. Let me know which one you think is fake, the Submariner or the GMT and our we, we all know it's a Submariner, which is fake, but this is a one-to-one -one clone. And if you don't it's have... a super clone. This is a super clone. If you don't have so a real AAA. one right next to you, this is AAA. This feels surprisingly good for a fake Submariner. But the problem is, the, the reason these watches are so good is it's the detail. What and that's pay? what these things are. Is, is that yours? That's mine, yeah. What did you so, pay for it? I think about 600 quid or something. 600 quid? Yeah. Why it's... did you do that? Oh, because I, I bought two. Uh, I did a video where I took one to a shooting range and I shot it with a shotgun in high frame rate and it turns out that people don't like me shooting fakes. What <laughs> happened? <laughs> the video got taken down. I don't know why. It's shooting. Um, so can I... We so know... I had another video lined up where I've got a, a, a clip on my drone where you can um, remotely open. The drone's going to fly up a couple of hundred meters and drop it and then shoot that in high frame rate. I might still do that. Um, do you mean you shot it as it fell from the drone? Oh no, so I created this <laughs> this 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 apparatus and it was just held the, the watch share, shot it. it. It was actually really cool just seeing the, the shotgun shells still, just, just obliterate this. The this thing, thing is, I can't believe that you size us to your wrist, but that's one other thing. But, yeah. um, oh, because I did a, a, a in, a, in our green room, Adrian presented me this watch and he said, George, what do you think? Is this real or fake? Now, firstly, the alarm goes out and what do you think? But the thing for me on any fake watch is feeling the edge. You can instantly 
feel, the edge feels different. Now, I'm a tactile person, so I, I look at feeling different edges. And I always go to someone whenever they've got a good watch on. I go, can I, can I, here, give it to me. And you can feel the edges just feel a fraction different. That it's, feels... it's doing this. It's doing yeah. this. There's a, there's just a, it's, when you do this, it's hard, but it's yeah. when you actually try to. And, you... and, and it's the weird, that's how I, I, I can, I can find, I, you know, there's loads of other ways, but, yep. but for me, that was my quickest way of feeling a fake. So I actually opened this up and on the inside is, um, they call it a cloned movement. It isn't a cloned movement. This is, you can get cloned movement. This has an ETA clone with a plate on top of it. So you know when you open a modern it's car... A weight, it's a weighted plate because it adds more weight into it. Sure. Yeah. But it, it, it looks like the, the, the correct calibre because it's got all the right colours for, for the... The, the gold, the, the, the gold burgundy. Touches. Exactly. It's got yeah. all of it in there, but it's just a, a cap on top of the movement. So... Um, wait, wait a second. Can, yeah. we, can we... You know what? I'm thinking, why don't we get the watchmaker... Uh, the mask watchmaker in, take the backs off both watches. Let's do it. You know, if you say these are clone movements, I want I want the mask watchmaker. Is that all right? Look at him. Look at this guy. What's, 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 what's in your wrist today? Well, he's not going to tell me because he doesn't speak. Oh, look at that bronze hand. Oh, I oh, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can Oh, yeah, look at that. Now, Hamilton, Hamilton's well, on fire. How many watches does this guy have? He's, he's much watch maker, makes them himself. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt the episode. Oh, you dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you get something to say? Bezel. So Bezel have kindly sponsored this episode. I've worked with them in the past on my own channel. But here, Bezel, if you might not be aware of Bezel, they're a new platform over in the US. They are now global through their website, shop.getbezel.com, but they're big. USP is their iOS, their iPhone app, which you can just search for, get bezel. The thing that is different about bezel than other watch leaders is, there's quite a few points. The big thing is their whole experience. They have a community, they have on-hand watch experts who can advise you on the watches that you wanna get. You might have a watch in mind, but you're not too sure if that is the absolute watch you wanna get. They can help you out with it. I gotta point out one thing. Please. We did a, we did a quick survey of, of the the most popular watches and categories. The most popular watches on bezel are a Patek Philippe Calatrava, mm -hmm. a, an Omega Speedmaster, and a Rolex Datejust. So if that sounds like the kind of watches you like, like everybody, then that's, <laughs> this, this, this is the place you need to be. Game the other on. thing is their certification. This is something they even sniff. They sniff the papers. They yeah. sniff the you papers. You wish they'd sniffed your papers, because you <laughs> needed them in your I, life. Look, I, I've, I've needed them in my life for a while. Um, Thank you so much. Now back to the episode. Wait, one more thing. Not only are Bezel helping us out by sponsoring us, but they're helping you as well. Use discount code EFFINGTIME250, all is one word, all is capitals, and they will get you $250 off your first purchase. Now back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, is, these are modern fakes, or this was one modern fake. We've got another type of fake, oh, haven't we? Oh, yes. Well, do you know, the thing is, I customize dials. I create watches. So, honestly, when you look at these people doing, I know how to do a dial. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, you know, if you looked at it, you could. And I got caught up. So I'm going to explain. I got caught up. I brought two real fakes, but that were meant to be of that caliber of watch. Right. I went to, I thought, a trusted dealer on one. The other one was an online purchase. Oh boy. And I, I keep them in my safe. I don't, I don't, I haven't got rid of them. I haven't gone back to the dealer because I'll never touch him with a barge pole. Behind you. There. But I, oh, oh. but I, I keep them in the safe. I've even put a strap on one because it's just, and it sits there talking to me going, don't fucking buy a fake. Uh, these are called Frankensteins. So now, what, what do you mean by that? So this is a Bakelite Submariner. Oh, uh, sorry, GMT. Uh, this is a Bakelite GMT. Now, the bezel's wrong. 
How? Because that that bezel is not, it's a Bakelite bezel, but it's not 100% as a Bakelite bezel. Um, it's also the wrong colors. It's it, it's pre-faded, but it's not. That be bezel doesn't fit the case. The ca um, So that bezel it shouldn't be on that case. The case serial number is wrong for that bezel. The dial with those gilts and the things, that's a reprinted dial. The uh, sub dial, um, the date uh, is, is the wrong date for a Bakelite. Um, also, when you come to the crown, the crown doesn't actually fit perfectly in there and they you can see here there is um, they've worn away or they've polished out there was a little nipple lugs there they nip uh, they, they polished no that way. now I spent better some money on this now um, that sounds painful. why I'm saying to you when did you know when did I know it is about two three years later and I was thinking I was the top bollocks. I thought I was the daddy with this. Bakelite watch, boom, boom, boom. And... This must be a painful day. And what happened was, there's someone that I trust in the watch world, and I'm going to say his, his name. It's called Mr. Rolex. Oh, James Dowling. James Dowling. He is a god in... In, in the Rolex when, world. When, love it, chap. Not only that, on watches. He mm. has got some of the best watches. I love, I love him. Mm. He... I, he showed me, and he he wasn't a dick about it and going, hey, you've got a fake. He just went, put these next door to each other and tell me what you think may be wrong about yours. And literally went through everything. And he just went to me and said, I'm sorry to say, George, this is, this is, and, you know, two years later. Wow. And I thought, I'll go back to that dealer. And you could go back to the dealers, but this was, this was a purchase from a dealer. And I just went, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I, 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 you know, I, and I should have because it's it's a very expensive lesson. But what it did do. Now I was doing bound for watch department. So so what I any time I spend my money for myself, it's whatever profit I make in bound for watch department. I spend it on watches hmm. or I spend it on cars. It, that's my thing. Is it's you know you put profit into something that you know. Mm -hmm. But I should have known. I look at this and I and I'm I'm tapping it like that because it annoys the fuck out of me. I should have known. You look at the Illuminus. The Illuminus is wrong. It's green. Mm. You know I can point out everything that's wrong about it. That's painful. That, but that... but what it is is, it's a lesson. Mm -hmm. It's a lesson to say to you. I should have known. I know about watches and I should have known. Was the and price suspiciously low? It was on average for what they were mm -hmm. X amount of years ago. Now, a baker like, fuck me, they're fortunes. Mm -hmm. But then they weren't fortunes in that thing. I just love the idea that these baker lights were damaged. I love mm. the idea of all these things. Um, and if I get a, a thing, I can pop off this bezel and you can see underneath the paint is wrong. Right. Um, Did you uh, open the cat? Have you opened the back? Is, I've is opened the, this so the multiple times. And no, it's a it, it's it's a era correct ro movement. It's it's a Rolex, but not an era. It's a it's a, a later one. Right. So are, are all the the elements kind of legit? It's just they they shouldn't be together. Shape. No, because that bezel is a is that bezel is a, fra a fake a, an out and out fake bezel, and right. that's a reprinted dial, right. and that's that crown is wrong for that now. I'm telling you of how I got caught out, okay? Mm. I've been caught out th almost three times. Now, you know, one one time it's something, two times it's, you know... And yeah, fool me once, yeah. shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, and fool me three times, you're fucked. So, <laughs> anyway. so anyway, there is something else. This came with box papers. Oh, really? It came with everything that wow. you would think was legit. Yeah. Now... So the full I, I know, I know in Italy, there is so many places that you can get printed papers. You can get boxes. You can get all of this. I know because I've been to these shops. And the reason why I've been to these shops is because I liked the quality of, of, of some of these boxes. It's also because I buy memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So some of these places buy the memorabilia to then... So I was buying memorabilia off these guys. And then I was like, well, what's in the back there? Oh, no, 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 don't see here. Don't see here. And these were really cool memorabilia. Like, you know, I've got like... Um, uh, like um, 
displays and things like that. That's what I was buying from them. But I'd see in the back and I was just like, why have you got a stack of, you know, vintage um, Rolex boxes or, or Pate mm-hmm. boxes, yeah. the cork box? Right. You know, why have you got those? Wow. And then and then I was like, wow, I've never seen that many. Door shut, you're out. And the same with papers. Papers was the other thing. Yeah. But I want to talk about one <laughs> quick Please. thing because this pays to have friends and brands, okay? Okay. So, what I'm saying to you about the third one, because the third one is something else. This. What this, is that? This is a watch that never existed, okay? The case did, it was a Hoya case, but that dial, the whole configuration never existed. And I'd paid for it already. I bought it, it was on the way, and I thought, Genius. I love that elliptical case. I, cool. I, so the so that comes from a, 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 an old Hoyer, but everything about it you think is like, actually, this is fucking cool. I thought I'd found Mint a prototype. Edition. Yeah. You know, I thought I'd found a prototype. And I messaged um, the person that was in charge of Hoyer um, Heritage, that's a very good friend of mine. She's now moved to Bulgari. And I messaged her and I said, hey, um, just brought this, isn't it amazing? And she said, well, we never made it. (laughs) Now, I went back to the um, seller and just to prove on this, the seller disappeared, his contacts disappeared and it and he ghosted me. No. Um, Now, I paid money for that. So. What I can do is I can say, fuck off to those. <laughs> Let me ask a controversial question, Mr. Modifier, Mr. Customizer. Yeah. How is that not credible as a customized Hoyer? Uh, that, boom. So, so that's, that's a great question. Because it looks fantastic. So, so for me, I, I'm like, I'm going to throw another dial in that at some point. <laughs> Because I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make it. I love the case. I love the, I love the whole vibe. But I, but the thing is, yeah, it looks well done. It looks amazing. Yeah, this it is, is the thing is, you look at some of those things, and so it was just one of those that the dial I, is sharp. And it is. the other thing, color scheme is great. But it pays to have friends in these brands. One more point before the watchmaker comes in. I want to give a shout out to Longines, and I want to give a shout out to Omega. And, and I know there are other brands. Ooh. There are, but there there is now a service where I had the, the Ranchero, uh, a dealer, a second dealer, Ranchero. alleged on social media when they saw my social media post that it was a redialed Ranchero, and I thought, well, let's find out. So I contacted Omega, and they said, well, in actual fact, we have a service now where we will. Uh, authenticate your watch, and and I don't know if it's for a fee or not. I think this was early on with Petros and Reynald having this very passionate project to um, groom whatever watches exist out there and and separate the real from the the not. So uh, I took the Ranchero to the museum and received a full report. The place it had been bought from, that it was a military, it was a military issue, or it was given to a soldier in in Germany wow. um, during the war, in nineteen or, or after the war, an American serviceman in Germany, um, and then it had been serviced, and service hands had been replaced, and the tritium had been the radioactive tritium had been removed from the yeah, dial. They did at that time. They did at the time. It was one of those transition models in the late fifties. And that was all done. And then I have this beautiful certificate in a beautiful red lush envelope from Omega cool. that you unwind. And it's just, I mean, yeah, the, the quality of the of everything Omega do is, is at an elite level. And I now have this proof. But this is not just for me because it's, yep. you know, I'm in, I'm in the game. This is a service offered to people who want to authenticate their yeah. watches. And do you know that? And Longines do the same. And they actually, when you go to Longines and you go into their archive room, up until the 1970s, every single watch was recorded by hand. Every single watch. This is a brand that produced millions and millions and millions of watches. You can go into this room that smells. Uh, Marcus and I have been there several times, and it is the Ron Burgundy from Anchorman moment where you walk <laughs> in. It just smells like rich mahogany. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful wooden library with these these volumes, and you can take a random volume down. And I, I joked that I was going to try and find my mother's watch because she had a watch that was that 
was in this room somewhere, I would be able to find the, the name of her watch. Of course, I never found it. It would have taken me literally years Wouldn't to go cool. through the volume from the 60s and 70s when Mum was, Mum's was made. But this is an, another service by Longines, and I think that shows to me this is just such a important and soulfully enriching development from the yeah. industry that they will say, send us your watch. We will take the time to do this. And, and whatever the fee is, if there is a fee, it's not the length of time it takes because this is, this is something that they're doing to, for their brand cachet as well, and it's brilliant. And I think that's where Bezel comes in as well, and that's where I think that both sides of this. Do you know what I would say on something like that is... Fuck you to the person that um, went against Andrew on the Ranchero. That's the ultimate. You know, there is there's uh, trolls in this world. A lot of keyboard there's, experts out there. There is. Yeah. And that is where I'm going to say, we've got to bring in this guy. Listen, listen, and, yeah. and, you know, the thing is, I know when something's wrong and he can yeah. off. Thank you. Libations have arrived. What is this? Yeah. Okay. Well, we he's never going to tell us. Tasty. That looks tasty. Yep. Thank you very much. Shout out to whoever got these glasses because these glasses are fancy as hell. No, I want the monks back. <laughs> <laughs> Season three. We can get away with drinking much more. Cheers. All this. What is this? This is a. Oh, this is bloody Shiraz. Cheers. Cheers. This is this is Shiraz. This is the one you love from season one. Christ. This is bloody Shiraz. Bloody Shiraz. Mm. Bloody Shiraz? Mm, mm, mm. How would you say that? Bloody Shiraz, mate. Please don't. Please well, don't. Bloody Shiraz. Please don't. Hey, if you're Australian and you're offended, just, Australian. just comment. <laughs> bloody Shiraz Gin. Bloody G&T. Yeah. Uh, bloody Shiraz Gin is all about the colour, flavour and fun. Ooh, a bit awesome. like my studio underdog Goofy Panda. Oh, good. Watch the watch brand that most consistently puts a smile on your face. That is yeah, a good. great question. God, he's really stepped up his questions this year. I mean, they were good the first time, but they were one word. They, they were, Actually, he, let's do a one-worder. Yeah. We've been rambling. Be. <clears throat> what puts a smile on your face, George? My own brand. Sorry. You do do some pretty smiley stuff, to be fair. Look, seeing Snoopy on a dial or something, it just makes me smile. Popeye. Yeah. I, I just look down at those and, you know, I, I could say to you loads of brands that I work with, yes, of course, it puts a smile on my face. I get that Monaco, the carbon Monaco, I fucking love it. I love putting it on my wrist. I love putting this on my wrist. But to have a character on your wrist, yeah, yeah. it's kind I'm of like, my thunder. you know, it's, it's fun. What do you got? All right, I'm going to go slightly different. So I'd, I'd, I'd say a watch cluster, and I'd say 60s, 70s watches mm. put a smile on my face. There's, there's a, and you mentioned Longines earlier. I'm obsessed yeah. with vintage Longines. There's an Instagram account, Vintage Longines, yeah. and his watches are gorgeous. Uh, the Gerald Genta Mickey Mouse Jumping Hour watch is the one that makes me smile. I really want one. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. Thanks for Pillars for... For hooking us up with some sexy gin. Yeah. Lovely. Sexy Sip gin away. Time. Right, so let's check out these fake watches. Shall I take the back off this one? You, take the back you do that one. I'll do this one because I'm scared of breaking watches. The amount of watches I've broken is painful. Okay, I can tell this is fake because this... Is the, it hard the to get threading? It feels like they've put sand in the thread. It's a little gritty. <laughs> <laughs> that is not pleasant. So look at this movement. Oh wait, no, wait, this wait, wait, wait. this is the upgraded. Wait, 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 but 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 even look on the back. Look at the stamping on the back. Now you have to be a genius. Holy. Look at that stamping on the back. They take it up. You look at the stamping on the back. We can't make those two. So th th this is a one-to-one -one clone, and so they've. Good lord! It, it, you, you, you do have to know what you're so looking at. So honestly, we will keep these on this side. And those well, you, yours has got a sticker on it. Okay, yeah. It's got, yours has got the green sticker on it. So this is the fake watch, and you can see it's it's got a full full balance bridge. We've got the red wheels. We've got. I mean, it's it. If you know what you're looking for, you can tell. Well, why don't you do the same with that one now? You've even got the skeletonized rotor with the Rolex logo etched into it. So this, if you were not a watchmaker and you weren't massively clued up on the wheels and all the the tech inside. And you ask the Even dealer to open this up. on that rotor, the way that that edge has that sort of satin brushing, that's just identical. It is crazy. Just go to the, uh, it's a blue bit. 
that bit there is the blue there. The blue is there, yeah. So you've you've got the blue balance spring in there. Okay. Can you just see yeah. the little tinge of blue in there? Yeah, but this one is more prevalent. Yeah, and that so red here. You do this one and show. So th this is a slightly different era. This is a previous era of caliber. But you can see you got the the red wheel is a big giveaway in that and that very blue balance. That's what I was talking about is in there. When the finishing, look at that. Uh, I is it the Cerachrom balance ring? Is that what it is? It's the blue yeah. Cerachrom. This is actually better than, than I expected. The other one, the one that I shot was, had a, was an ETA clone with a, with a plate on top of it. This is actually the Relix clone, one to one clone, which wow. is remarkable. And that's why it costs 600 quid. I feel like I'm flexing my feet. Wait, but, what it, <laughs> but can I just point out that little step in there would never have been a minute little step in that cornering. When they're trying to put that on, they had to make a little step there. You look at this one, it's flat. See that there's a minute little step. Do you oh, see? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one hasn't got it. Nuts! This is damn. Crazy. I feel more frightened now. I just think it's uh, the, oh. the the game has lifted, hasn't it? It is. It is. And 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 this further uh, highlights why you have to buy from a dealer that is reputable, and and yeah. that's why it's useful to have a company like Bezel who have an authentication team. It's, it is their responsibility to do this, and so you can buy from them. I have two questions to ask you guys, and we've actually gone on way longer than we expected. But this, to me, has been an episode with no flat spots at all. So I don't think there's going to be anything edited from what we've said. But I do want to ask two questions. Does the fact that you can do a watch to that level, that standard, for £600 show that the real one for how much is this watch new uh seven RRP, seven, seven and a half so for more than 10 times the price does that show that rolex watches are overpriced so my my argument to that is let's say you do your master's degree in i don't know economics let's just say mm -hmm. i'm asking the question and i download your paper mm -hmm. and i write it up myself mm -hmm. have i got a master's degree Okay. And, 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 intellectual property and and that's how i see it is mm. rolex have spent the money making this perfect mm. no not that no, so, <laughs> but the real version okay <laughs> rolex have spent the money and the time and we're talking millions upon millions to get the bezel color right and so, actually this was the first bicolor ceramic bezel they ever did and it took them ages to get this this then no bleed between the blue and the black that's that's right and and think about how much money the investment in the factory to create that the adjustments how many but millions of cases make, make it back in two minutes no of, of, of course it <laughs> you know, is. of course that, it, but, look, but that's, look, that's, but that's, that's my point that's where i look at it cost of a watch marketing is the other thing um, and and how much of this is leaning on the marketing of that no it is it, and it, how it, many and of these are bought because of the marketing I, I i totally agree but what i would say to you is on every brand I'm, i get absolute crap and we'll talk about this on one of our other other episodes is I get crap from different people of how can you um, sell a watch for that when this is the movement cost and this is this mm. and the reason and you should be selling for X X mm -mm. where I sell it for half X mm -hmm. and I get I get crap for it. Mm. Uh, micro brands are very, very good at. So is that pie chart your cost as well? That, no, I, but that's how I got explained when I was building this watch back in the day is cost is this, mm -hmm. you've got to spend this amount on marketing mm -hmm. and just know that that pie chart is the cost of the watch has got to be this, this is the marketing. For me, it's, it, it's the other way around. Marketing mm -hmm. is that much, cost mm -hmm. is that much mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm trying to bring as much as I can. So what I'm saying is most brands they they times the movement as mm. their cost mm -hmm. so, so so they will go t x times whatever they will go the margin is, a, that, is that, and, that and, multiple. That, and that's the multiple yeah. then they'll add in other things and then it's marketing mm -hmm. and you think of marketing not only marketing distribution travel uh, everything well it's, it's 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 a whole infrastructure so, so and, can i have the pie chart back because you left something out of that okay 
So this is cost, but but what percentage is? Because what Adrian's saying is that it discounts, it, it sort of discounts the R and D. But R and D, you can claim back. No, of of course, of so, course. But so, these guys don't. The, these guys, the, the fake watch doesn't have. No, it doesn't have. No, no, doesn't no, no, have no, this no, and no, doesn't have this. No, I, I agree. So yeah. theirs is profit, profit, profit. But what exactly, I'm, yeah. I'm saying to you is, you are saying about R and D. R and D. You can claim back on tax. You can. The whole thing is you can offset the whole thing. So, so what I R and D is part and parcel of any business. You you can work it in over X amount of period of time as long as you've got a sale. And the thing is, for them, the cost of making a watch, whatever it is, mm. brand X, there is a cost. Mm -hmm. And if they're in, let's say, a hundred thousand that they sell of the watches. You've made it overnight. You made that cost back. Mm -hmm. You made. But 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 this proper. this is the same for for all businesses. It's yeah. the same for Starbucks and a coffee. It's the same for Apple and the iPhones. Yeah. The iPhone does not cost a thousand pounds to make. No. But that but that 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 isn't business. You you have to have the upfront cost, the research, and all of that. That stuff costs money. And so I I I don't agree that this. The the only element is this highlights why watch companies buy their bracelets from China. Why watch companies get their cases from China? Because the engineering is out there. This might not be up to the standard of Rolex, but this most certainly and is up to the standard of brands below Rolex. That's true. And that's why they go out there. Yep. Not naming any <laughs> names. <laughs> There's one other question. There's one whole thing. I thought this episode would be largely about us looking at why people do it the psychology of it, is it ever okay? So we've gone really long and really deep into the paint on this one. And I think it's been, uh, like I said, I don't think we should necessarily change the plan, but let's talk a little bit about this, how people wear fakes and why they do. Because I was talking to um, uh, the masked watchmaker. I nearly gave <laughs> what his name, her name. Uh, I was talking about uh, fakes with him yesterday, her. Him, them, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Shit. Okay. So you know it's Spin a guy. It out. It's a guy. <laughs> um, and he, there was an anecdote told about a friend who owns um, a fake version of every real watch they have and then will change them depending on the security and the safety of where they are. So given that their friends and family and others that know them already know they own the watch, therefore there's no sense of it could Don't be a fake. Get your wrist cut off for, for a fake. But this this is a point that's about coming back thing. to this but celebrity. Yeah. Is that we haven't talked about how people do it. It's, it's like walking around with a t-shirt saying, I have 10 grand in my pocket, but not having the 10 grand in your pocket. <laughs> you are getting all the downside of wearing a nice watch and no upside of I'm wearing a nice watch. actually enjoying it. Yeah. You're being a target without actually being a target. And that's just fucking ridiculous. No, that, but that's discounting the fact that you are going to trick the majority of people. The majority of people that are in that nightclub um, with but, you looking in this dark conditions, like, oh my gosh, you've got a Richard Miller. I'm going to sleep with him tonight. But again, that's that's like having a t-shirt saying, I have 10 grand in my pocket. But they're still going to get laid. Do you, um, okay, no, I, I'm coming back to the reason. Um, and if he'd come back with another reason of... Um, I know that there was one of there was a client of mine, and um, he kept on getting quite drunk, and he would fall over and really fuck up his watches. And so he so he said to me, he said, oh, "I buy fakes for going out and night clubbing." There you go. And I went, "Why?" And he goes, "Well, because you know," and we had to just work out. We had to get off this, and mm. now he wears my G-Shock. Exactly. And, okay. and exactly. So, so it was that whole thing of like, well, fuck it. Wear something cool yeah. that you don't mind bashing the shit out of it. Yeah, okay. And wear something that, you know, you're already going to be on the top table. So don't worry about that. Mm. Or you're already going to be whatever. You know, you think about some of the richest people in the world. They're wearing the if Ed Sheeran, in the world. If Ed Sheeran, John Mayer and Eminem can rock G-Shots, yeah. mm, then mm. fucking... Yeah. Anyone who's worried about a watch or anyone who thinks they need a, a, an expensive watch. Can I, can I be a reminder? B-Y-O-I. Oh, fuck a duck. I don't have one. I, I, can, I, can, I, can I step in? Have can you I got step one? In? Yeah. All right, go for it. So, um, 
<laughs> Andrew took my spot on BYOI. So I'm taking Adrian's spot on BYOI. It is on. Um, and and this, is a, this is teamwork makes the dream work. Um, <laughs> I am uh, highlighting Isotope. Um, there is, it's a great oh. brand. I first saw it, first saw it from Cool Hunting. Um, uh, these are some very good friends of mine. Shout out to Josh and Evan. Um, and I saw the first one there and mm. I fell in love with this brand. I think there's something very, very cool. Um, watch the video. Hi guys, uh, my name is Jose Miranda. I am the owner and the head of design of Isotope Watches. And um, we create original and offbeat uh, designs. Uh, we try to make everyone's life a bit happier. I, I like what they're doing. They, they, yeah. They've got a genuinely different but cool styling to what they're they're doing with the watches. So good shout, George. Yeah, well, nice one. Thank you. I'm I like and subscribe <laughs> to buy micro brands in general. So like and subscribe to us. Yeah. Like uh, subscribe. We it, it actually makes a difference. You might think, hey, they're already over a thousand followers. Why do they need me? We need you. We we, we want you. you. Oh, hi there. <laughs> hi like there. and subscribe. Uh, we 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 watch that count and we really draw a lot of confidence and love from it. So thank you. Amazing. Thanks a lot, guys. So the, I think the lessons are: don't buy fake watches. Buy a G Shock. If you're wanting to buy a watch, get it from Bezel. Yeah. Cool. Well, well said. Rock and roll. All right. See you guys next time. See you next time. Take care.